welcome everybody and thank you so much for sort of tipping out tonight. Anyway, welcome to Johannes. I would like to tell you something a bit of my life as a sculptor. When I was 16 years old, my parents sent me to France. I lived in the Rue de Varennes, and in the Rue de Varennes is also the Musée Rodin. And I saw these citizens of Calais walking towards their death. And you see these beautiful gestures and this powerful body language he uses. And for the very first time in my life, I was touched by sculpture. One or two years later, I went to Florence, and these are the citizens of Riace. They are of such outstanding beauty. It is just, it made my heart race. It was absolutely outstanding. So, I got a little bit of an idea of wanting to become a sculptor. And what do you have to do when you're a sculptor? You have to learn a little bit of drawing. So, what I did is I went to an evening class in Munich. That There's one teacher who shouts at his students and who is really strict. And I went straight to him and said, I want to learn from you how to draw. And after one year of teaching me, I took all my courage together and I said to him, I want to become a sculptor. And he said, look at me, I'm 65, I have no family, I have no money, I have a rusty old car, I have 300 paintings in my studio which no one wants to buy, and I'm teaching in this lowest level art school you can imagine. If you want to be at exactly the same place when you're 65, then go ahead and become a sculptor. And it is absolutely true. There is almost no way that you can make it as a sculptor, as an, as an artist, because you do something extraordinary. You try to be original, so you try to find a new language. No one speaks. So you have to convince people over years to, to speak the same language. And then you produce something no one needs. So if no one needs it and no one understands it, it's, it's practically impossible to, to make a living from it. With, with these words of my teacher in my ears, I decided that I don't know if I want to become a sculptor, I don't know if I have the talent, I don't know if I have the ideas, and I decided to study law. And I was sitting there for three years and learned about civic and public law. And then I made my mind up that I want to become an artist. And I applied to the Academy of Fine Art in Munich. And twice I was refused. And the third time I put all my plaster sculptures in front of the professor's door so that he could only squeeze out like that. And I was waiting at the end, and I said, I have to come to you because you have to teach me how to do it properly. For two years, I learned how to do modeling and clay and plaster, mold making, and everything which a normal sculptor will do. And then I had a time out in Italy for half a year. And in that time, my wish became very big. I wanted to work in glass and stone and steel. And so, I went to my professor and said, I want to combine glass and steel and stone. And he said, that doesn't work. And then I went to the glass professor and said, I want to combine glass, steel and stone. And the glass professor said, it doesn't work. And then I thought, okay, if, nothing, if you don't want to go with me, I have to find it out myself. You see, I only worked in flat glass with wood and I drilled holes in it and I glued it together and, and screwed it together. And then I made a figurative piece that was the very first piece in glass and steel I, I sold. And that gave me great strength because I never thought that I would ever sell the work as well. That, but I realized one thing, I cannot continue to work in flat sheet glass. This, is, this didn't allow me to form it properly. So I had to learn how to blow glass. But you cannot do it on your own. You always have to have a team. And when I blow my big pieces, I have Karl Nordbruch and Peter Riley. They are just fantastic. At the end of a day working with me, they're completely exhausted. But it is so exciting because it's so different to what they normally do. And why is it so different? I make my own molds. And I only could do that because I understood how to make glass. This is, this is 30 kilos of hot, 1,200 degree hot glass on a pipe. And they blow that into the molds there. Absolutely outstandingly skilled, wonderful people to work with. It's just a joy. And this is the piece 
granite, bronze, and, and the glass. And it just links how carpenters would link wood together. So a very, very nice, beautiful, clear solution of bringing these three pieces together. And it's not screwed anymore, and it's not glued anymore. It, it, it had developed in a, in a wonderful way. I hit on the, the poet Rumi. One of his poems starts, you are granite, I'm an empty wine glass. You know what happens when we touch. And what I try is bringing granite and glass together without breaking it, without destroying it. I was very moved when I, when I read that sentence. And because I try to make a union between two complete contrasts. And then a lady came and said, Johannes, you always make square pieces. Can you make a round one? And I thought, oh my god, round ones are so difficult to make. I don't want to make a round one. And she said, I only want to have a round one. And I thought, OK, OK, I think of a round one. And now I realize that many more people buy my round sculptures than my square ones. So when you get a commission or when someone offers you, challenges you, try to, try to fulfill it. Try to go down their route, because it's really enriching. And it, it was an eye opener. This is a point and line. It rests on a line and on a point. And it is this contrast, again, the dark and the light, the black and the white, and the fragile and the strong holding each other upright. Because each of us are fragile and are strong. But we have to bring that together, and we have to make it work in, in one way or the other. And then a gallery came, and this guy was especially clever. He said, Johannes, if you make your pieces more complicated, then we can double the price. So I made a very big three, and then I got more brave, and I made a one with six different pieces, and they all link together. They are just holding together with one wood screw. This is one with 12, and then I made, in inverted commas, the masterpiece with 24 pieces. And surprisingly, they do not sell very well. And I have a suspicion, or it, the suspicion was, was um, confirmed by some people who said, you know, in the simple pieces you made, is everything you want to say is in there. You have the fragile and the strong and the dark and the light and the transparent and the, and the opaque. And I realized that this is, this is nice to do because you become like a virtual, like a piano player who can play anything and he plays anything. But you have to put your soul in as well, not just showing off with your skill and with your, with, your, with, with your inventiveness of getting bigger and bolder. A garden designer asked me to put a sculpture in his garden. And I called it a, ref a reflection. And I was very happy with it. But I was sitting beside it. And I thought, there is something behind it which I want to discover. Many experiments and, and also being dissatisfied with the limitations of the glass, I realized that I have to find something to replace it. This is a result. It's a seated figure. And you see that I use now the space instead of the glass to get the same purity and the same lightness into, into the sculptures. But this piece has touched many souls. It is now standing in a Buddhist monastery. And Ajahn Sumedho said to me, your sculpture represents what I try to teach my monks and they don't understand it. It is emptiness, complete and utter emptiness. And probably I don't understand it also completely. But I knew if I can touch such a spiritual man, there is something in my work which can speak. And even if it's only one on in the world, I got it once right. And then I made a kneeling figure. And I thought to myself, why, Johannes, do you want to make a kneeling figure? And I thought, OK, yes, I know why. Because I was told that I will not survive as a sculptor. And now I'm already I'm, I'm working as a proper professional sculptor. And I have a family, and I have two children, and I, live, I have a roof over my head. And I have it warm, and I had always enough to eat. I sometimes want to kneel down and say thank you, because I always have my teacher's words in my head. You fail. You will fail. And by chance and by the help of many guardian angels, I was allowed to continue to work and still enjoy a, a life with a family. Follow in the simplicity, in a way, a couple of light 
holding just a gentle gesture, holding hands. This is the light shadow, because my figures make light shadows, not black shadows. Mother and child, and this is how I like to see them, with the evening light behind them. Welcome figure. And here I finish with poem from Rumi again. No wantings, no anger. In that purity, you receive and reflect the images of every moment. From here, from the stars, from the void. And I think he expressed quite well what I want to do. Thank you very much.